Hi, this is Ben Atma and I'm super excited to talk about Project Debater, one of my favorite use cases of artificial intelligence and I am here with Dan Lahav. You are a researcher and a data scientist in, in, in that project, in the research team at IBM and, and hopefully you can share a little bit about what it is and, and how it works. And we are also super lucky that we have Harish uh, Natarajan here, uh, who was taking place in the initial challenge between humans versus project debater. And, and you will be involved in the project in the future, so it's a real pleasure to have you both. Um, Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, no, I'm excited. So Dan, yes. what is project, project Debater? So Project Debater is the first AI system that was able to have a full, meaningful debate with a human, with a wish. It was demonstrated in a live event in February this year. The debate had a format of 442, so the Project Debater is able to Firstly, do four minutes of opening statements, so it will introduce the uh, topic that it needs to debate, and it will give the initial statements on it. Then it will listen to its opponent, and then it will give another four-minute speech, which is the button, so it will need to actually understand what the other side is saying, so it will be able to reply. Then the opponent has a chance to reply as well. And then there are two minutes of summary speeches in which it needs to capture the entire debate and outlay uh, what happened and the summary of what it thinks and how it weighed the different components in the debate itself. Yeah, I find this absolutely fascinating that we now have machines that can listen to someone and understand their arguments, go off and do their own research and construct arguments. So how did this feel working with or competing against a, a machine? So it was a fascinating experience and I think there's two things which always jump out at me. The first one was, as the debate started, the first 30 seconds seemed to be very alien, like nothing I've actually experienced. But then the rest of it was just a debate. It was an opponent making arguments with a lot of detail, probably more detail than most humans would. But then you were just in a debate, so it didn't even at that point seem like you were debating against a machine, beyond the fact that there's obviously this big monolith next to you, and when you think about it, you are. But the other part which really struck me is what Project Debater was really able to do was in 15 minutes of preparation time, the same amount of time as I got, was synthesize so much information and come up with lots of empirical evidence, the kinds of a human being never could. Yeah. And I think that was just really impressive to me and just suggests some of the capabilities it has and values it has in debating and beyond it. Amazing. So I'm particularly interested in Applying this, you could say this is a nice little gimmick stating these humans versus computer challenges, which IBM has a great history of, of, of doing successfully. But what are some of the use cases beyond this? So, so the use cases are just being explored now, but there are a few very exciting directions that the project may take. So Project Debater has a spin-off which is called Speech by Car. It has one key difference compared to Project Debater. Instead of collecting the arguments from a huge corpus, the Project Debater has over 400 million articles that are plugged in for it to get the information. This has the ability to collect the arguments from the local audience, as in from the audience that is going to be the most close to it. It may sound like a trivial move, but it opens many different applications. You can envision a CEO of a company that wants to better understand what the employees think of certain policies. Yeah. So they can use it in order to try and include many more people in the discussion, right? Because normally yeah. you only get the reach of people that are in immediate contact with you at the board, and now you can just query quite easily everyone that is going to come. You can think about an application of going with it to the market in order to better understand how it, operate, how it operates and what people are saying in much more detail than how many people are all against something because it allows you to do something which is quite unique, which is to scale up things which are very hard. Right? Because if I'm going to give you a question to which the answer is numeric, let's say how many cars a certain person has, even if I'm going to get 10,000 of these questions, there are very easy techniques of being able to get very meaningful insights from the data. Like yeah. you can average, get a distribution, find a median. However, for text, and specifically for argumentative text, it is very hard. Yeah. If you would now need to try to self-analyze over 10,000 arguments, it would yeah. be a very exhaustive Absolutely. exclusion. And yeah. you're just not going to be able to do it efficiently. 
a machine that is able to collect the arguments and give you not just simple analysis, but how many people are polycom, what is making them to be polycom, and create a narrative quite efficiently for me, therefore can be very meaningful if you're thinking about products, if you're a politician that better wants to understand your constituency, internally in the companies, and many other exciting fields that are going to be opened up, like medicine or finance or law. I, I, I love that idea, and I, I heard you speak earlier, and you, you talked about actually the system will give you this ability to do some critical thinking, which I think is a, is a hugely important skill we need today, and if we can get some help with this, that's amazing. So I'm a computer scientist, obviously. So it's my background, but I'm also, I, I come from a background of debating with it in my university years. And, you know, many times, especially when you teach in some places around the world, they just don't have access to high quality teaching. Critical thinking is hard for everyone, yeah. especially in complicated situations. But, you know, my dream um, would be to be able to find a way that AI could help you get better understanding because simple things, even an automated way of hearing the other side. This is something which is meaningful if you're a CEO of a company, if you, know, you want to know how people are going to attack you, what are going to be the arguments, but also if you just want to be in a very safe environment, just because many people are afraid to say their opinion, you know, allow it to just yeah. stay, get meaningful feedback, and over time be able to just both criticize and have critical thinking, but also be able to construct your own material and understand how to give it. So the educational avenues are also a very interesting and engaging direction. Yeah, I love that. Um, it also means that probably people listening to this will think, hmm, I could just give my homework essay to Project Debater and deliver this to me. And, and people that are journalists might think, actually, I can use that to do my job. What does that mean for the future? Um, what will this mean for the future? So I so what I found very you know, just fascinating about the debate that we had with Harish is that I don't think that the debate proved that machines are superior to humans. I think the message is more complicated because debate is, is not one skill. It's a combination of many different skills. And I think we've clearly saw that still as humans, the cultural context that we apply, the ability to fully listen and understand each other, how we interact even in our conversation right now, how we're able to pick up cues yeah. and intonation, still challenges that are very hard for machines to do. And I don't think that machines are going to be able to be better than us in many of these skills in the, in the near future. However, machines, we cannot, if, if I'm going to you know, try to have a corpus of 400 million papers, I'm going to spend more than my entire life you know, just to read them and you know, good luck for me to remember <laughs> the, the initial ones. Absolutely. But, get, but being able to do it in an educational way that is going to get the evidence that is necessary for you to explore just shows that machines are better in some of the subskills of debating and humans are better than others and probably the outcome of it is that you shouldn't think about a narrative of men versus machine we should think about the future in which we use machines as you know, decision making assistants not in order to replace us so the journalist is not going to you know have, can, can just you know, retire from the office and never show up again, but have a very strong tool of doing much higher quality research yeah. because they're going to have access to information sources more efficiently than before and then have the job of using that to just compile higher quality journalism or you know, a doctor or any other field that you can mention. So Harish, when you do debates in the future, it will mean you can use the project debates to help you and augment what you do rather than well, place. Sadly, I'm not sure debating will evolve to that point, but it would certainly be one of the ideal ways to create a great speech. Just to pick up what Dad said, people aren't persuaded by logic alone and by facts alone. And that is something where I think a machine and artificial intelligence will struggle to be persuasive to a human audience. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be one of the roles which a human will have when it comes to convincing others to act a certain way or to believe a certain thing that can be so much richer if assisted by that level of information, not just in a debate, but for all kinds of decision making. And I think even in San Francisco, it was very clear that that was going to be part of the value of the technology going forward. Absolutely, and no, I love that. And 
Um, I know that you will be involved in another project mm -hmm. with IBM. I, I, I think I remember meeting Gary Kasparov at, at one of the IBM events and he always said that actually it in, initially was quite shocking being beaten by a computer. Nowadays the best chess champions are hybrid teams, machine learning algorithms and people. So is this what you're trying to do in the future? So, well, if you talk about the experiment. <laughs> so, next month, uh, in the 21st of November, uh, in the UK at Cambridge University, there's going to be a different kind of experiment. So, this time, what we're going to do is there are going to be again two teams, but each team is not going to be a, a rich versus project debater. Each team will have project debater and two humans with it. So, we are going to debate uh, AI as a topic, whether AI is going to bring us more harm than good, uh, yes, and the, and the future of AI. But instead of just having hu a human from each side, we're going to have project debaters as the first speech and then two professional debaters and two professors at university. There is also an, an additional special layer to this experiment. So, it's not going to be project debater in the mode of just collecting arguments from the web. The participants in the event will be able to contribute arguments. So, before, probably before, it's unclear the exact details of whether it's going to be before or but, but the bottom line is, it's going to be a way of getting a lot of people and their opinions in, and we're going to see a machine who's able to make it much more inclusive and engaging to the entire audience. But, exactly like Arishi is saying, use everything that he said, combine it, and then let the humans uh, you know, have a much more focused on the discussion. Amazing, I can't wait for this. I, I could carry on now for the next two days. I love this topic, so thank you very much for sharing. Thank this you. Thank you. Thank you.